Good morning and welcome to the Brooklyn outpost of the Real Deal Kitchen. I think we might need some Twizzlers here this morning. I'm not really sure. We're uh, uh, making, among other things, uh, a plum and honey galette, which is essentially a free-form tart. And some of the seriousness is arising because we have been uh, working, somewhat working with this uh, beautiful flower from Frederick's Farm. Does it say Frederick's Farm on there, Dad? Frederick's Flower. Frederick's Flower. Um, and I have been uh, for uh, several, where? Westbrook. I've been working uh, for several years now, uh, well, with the last year and a half being a bit of a hiatus, but uh, the two years prior to that, uh, heavily uh, back into my bread baking mode, uh, worked with many flowers from uh, the regions surrounding uh, New York City, primarily upstate New York. Uh, these flowers and grains have been somewhat uh, renewed, revived through a project called the Grain Project. And um, I am lucky enough to know uh, a, a woman who has really been the uh, person who spearheaded a lot of this uh, undertaking. And so I've had the pleasure and privilege of working with many wonderful uh, heirloom green flowers and, um, and so I'm, I'm definitely missing that a bit and as ho hopefully as my hands and my legs get stronger and I can withstand being upright a bit more uh, perhaps in a, within a few months be able to renew some of those flower uh, bread projects but for now as you well know if you've been watching at all we've been working a lot with a more a baked good ends on the biscotti and scones and some cookies, but we haven't used those flowers. We've used more uh, the King Arthur flower, which is a beautiful, large, uh, largely available, widely available uh, flower. And they really do a, a good job uh, with their flowers, but it's a different animal. And. Uh, so when we uh, return, when I started returning to my home in Brooklyn, uh, one of the things, of course, I was wanting to have stock was some flour. And uh, my dear friends who uh, work in, in, with these flowers, these heirloom flowers, brought us this flower from uh, Frederick Flower. And this is one that I had never worked with at all. And it's just a, a white flower. And we went about making a batch of scones, and uh, we were really caught off guard <laughs> with the amount of moisture. Uh, it's so light uh, that it has required almost no moisture. So if the recipe uh, calls for, like in the scones, it calls for two thirds of a cup of buttermilk. Uh, we probably could have used one third or maybe even less. So this is maybe only our third, maybe fourth time of working with this flower because we've been a little hesitant. We are approaching it again today uh, and for uh, and informed, a little bit more informed now. So we're making this free form tart dough and usually when you make any kind of pastry of that sort, you add some ice cold water to help bring the dough together. And so we are planning on probably needing maybe up to no water <laughs> in this. And we're going to watch it closely as we're making the dough. And we won't do it by hand, we'll do it in the food processor because I don't have a, actually a pastry uh, thingy <laughs> here in Brooklyn. Uh, so that's what we're working with kind of as a big project but other than that we have cleaned up some beautiful my father has cleaned up some beautiful uh, whole beans and i'm not holding them well uh, that are this wonderful t kind of a tiger stripe now the thing is with all these wonderfully colored like say purple potatoes and 
these gorgeous purple uh, streaked coal beans and you can get purple green beans and things like this just if you pick them up for the pleasure the visual pleasure of them which they do give you lots of visual pleasure uh, be forewarned that they don't keep this color when you cook them they will turn just basically a pale these will turn a pale white <laughs> greenish white not as pleasurable to look at but they're very tasty and when you're cooking these beans um, usually I enjoy them more almost braised so instead of like a quick the way normal green beans uh, your normal size or especially the haricot vert the very slender ones you might just flash in the in the water quickly these we like to cook for a bit of a longer time say even 15 minutes so they are have almost this braised breaking down feeling and they're very um, uh, almost buttery in your in your mouth they're really nice to eat it's a different experience than a green bean so if you do pick up some beans like this uh, give yourself the opportunity to, to cook them longer uh, than you might imagine and uh, they give you a wonderful mouth feel they're I call them Roma beans but they're yeah you know, they're kind of a Roma style bean maybe that's a prettier visual of those and uh, that's what we have going on yesterday. Uh, we made one of my recipes from, it's on the blog, twice cooked beets with roasted shallots. So they're beets that have been steamed. And then uh, we cook up some shallots and a little butter. And I like to do this all, finish it all in a cast iron pan. Then you add the beets back to the pan, lots of herbs and put it in the oven for about 15 minutes uh, and it is a delicious i think way to enjoy beets uh, different than steamed or roasted so twice cooked and that's probably going to be part of my lunch or dinner for the, the week ahead and we are going to return with a picture of this galette because i think that it's going to turn out wonderfully because we are now a little bit more informed about this Frederick flower. So to be continued, hopefully with a nice slice of plum and honey galette. And there'll be more on that when we return. Okay, until then, until just a few hours from now, be well. Take care.